Notice. Entry locked. Unfortunately, I've had to lock this entry for the following reasons. We originally found this entry on a vinyl disc in the ruins of Site-01. When we inserted a copy of it into the old Foundation database, it was automatically erased. We'd like to avoid anything like that if possible. Given the attention scp-wiki.net has received recently, we've locked all of the pages in order to prevent vandalism. Please contact the Foundation Preservation Guild for more information. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-5800. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Scientific institutions and observatories must be prevented from discovering SCP-5801. Leaked and disseminated information on SCP-5801 must be taken down and kept away from public knowledge or addressed as a hoax. Foundation protocols must be kept in place to prevent any entity or entities from breaching this aperture. Foundation metaphysicians have prepared an AIM, Absolute Idealistic Materials, chamber around SCP-5801 to permanently seal away entity or entities emerging from the aperture. Description: SCP-5800 is a hypothetical alternate reality that is known in relativistic physics as the fifth dimension. Specifics of SCP-5800 are unclear due to the inability of Foundation technology to properly analyze mathematical and anomalous dimensional constructs higher than our own. SCP-5800 retains radically different ideals than the laws of physics of baseline reality. SCP-5800 is host to living inconceivable abstract concepts that operate in the noospheric subspace similar to that of biotic components interacting with one another in a natural ecosystem. Most of these abstract concepts or entities are predatory in nature and aggressively envelop or dominate weaker ideatic concepts in order to increase in fractal topology. SCP-5801 is an aperture located approximately 5.5 astronomical units away from Earth and appears as a uniform 5 polytope, Schlieffli symbol T13334, with the Schlieffli symbol increasing in notation every 215 years. This aperture does not conform to normative space-time and instead appears to possess a tessellated geometry that steadily increases in complexity to the point that Foundation supercomputers are incapable of processing a digital representation of SCP-5801. SCP-5800 was officially designated following several events involving SCP-1425, SCP-2155, SCP-3005, and SCP-4565, and their effects on human society. Following a more accurate quantification of SCP-5800, Foundation resources are to be devoted to its neutralization. Addendum 5800-1 The Petroslav Notes Igor Petroslav, 1689-1751, was a Russian sorcerer and one of the first to codify their practices into what is now known as thaumaturgy. Towards the end of his life, Petroslav discovered SCP-5800 and began to perform experiments on it. Following his death, Petroslav's next of kin hid his work on it in a hidden chamber in his stronghold by Petroslav's will. This research was not rediscovered until it was excavated in 1996. The following are relevant translated paragraphs. If there is a world of ideas, then there is a world that contains the opposite of ideas. It took some experimentation to be able to breach the boundary between these two worlds, but now, I can see why it was sealed that way. I found it to be frayed at the ends, yet overflowing with some substance that can only accurately be described as light in our universe. This light is very pleasing to take in. Unfortunately, it melts the mind and causes madness. Abram stared into the portal for the entire day, and at the end he couldn't say a coherent sentence that didn't involve the color pink or the sight of smoke. In addition, the light seems to have an adverse effect on animals, as my two cats ran for their lives at the sight of the opening. If my observations are correct, I believe that submerging anything inside of this world will inevitably result in the idea remaining there, 
Victor put an apple inside of the portal before taking it out. The apple slowly shifted forms and color until it turned itself into a green snake who spoke cautionary tales about liquid hands and hateful stars in the sky. I took the liberty of sealing the aperture after that. I'd rather not have ideas interact with that world for a prolonged period of time. Addendum 5800-2 Further Research The following is an audio recording of Dr. McWarren, one of the lead researchers analyzing SCP-5800's effects on human cognition. All right, I'm supposed to leave the office, but I can't be fucked to write anymore. I've been bleeding out my nose and ears for the past two days and it keeps messing up my papers. <coughs> right, so what we've learned so far about SCP-5800 is that it's an ecological idea space for extremely volatile abstract concepts. These things have a hierarchy of sorts, which is dictated by the size of these beings. I use the term size loosely because the... <coughs> there are... These things are presented in sets of infinities, like how many integers or natural numbers there are in... In, in mathematics. The sheer size of these <coughs> these beings are defined as uncountable infinities, despite logic telling us that there can't be anything larger in scale than, well, infinity. <coughs> yes, I know to the average layman that can't be possible, but it is very much true. <coughs> these beings are represented by their Aleph numbers, numbers which represent the cardinality of infinite sets. Professor Hutchinson stated that such beings exist in these numbers and have been known to for quite some time. <coughs> what we found out is that there is a philosophy stemming around the hidden potential of the human mind. That in order to ascend past the boundaries of everything, one must secede from their personal principles and unlock what's within. <coughs> these, uh, it's just a metaphorical analogy and all that. Ideas presented in a way for us to understand how to be truly one with the very hand that exists above us and sits at a many-angled throne of stars and pure radiance. A blissful... Sorry, uh, got a bit carried away there. Anyway, there are sects that have had a long history with a certain key stretching all the way back to the Third Crusade. <coughs> a key that could open all the doors to the world and the mind itself. We haven't figured much about this door, though. I'm sure we have some keys locked up that can open some doors or all doors, but I don't know anything about a door. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think we've ever had a door contained in the first place. Or did we? I don't... I don't know. Whatever. I don't expect anyone to understand. <coughs> Calvin and I have been working our asses off on this thing, and I... I think it's affecting us somehow. They're telling us to go on medical leave. Our research and data on SCP-5800 is getting pushed to someone named Harkness. He's got more experience with this than I do anyway. Uh, shit, I'm getting lightheaded as hell. Right, that about wraps up what's been uh, happening as of late. <coughs> Talk soon. <coughs> Addendum 5800-3 SCP-5800-1 Exploration Attempt Project Border Blue After the appearance of SCP- Following testing between SCP- and SCP- It was determined that an exploration of the anomaly would give greater insight into its origins. A Urolena-class colony was erected near the entrance of SCP- Director Simon Browning was originally selected to head exploration efforts. However, 055 overrided protocol alpha contaminant in order to oversee exploration themselves, citing a need to be precise. The colony was considered self-sustaining on 2095-0329. A robotic drone was to be deployed into the anomaly on 2095-0409. However, five days prior to deployment, Site-19 Command received the following transmission. This is Agent Strofson, aboard Eurolena Class Colony 1093. We are undergoing a situation. Can anyone hear us? This is Dr. Johansson at Site 19 in New San Francisco Saturn. What's the situation? We're being pulled into SCP. We believe that the mission is over. 
Are you sure you're mentally well, Agent? From our telescopes, it looks like the colony isn't being pulled at all. No, 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 no. There's a... a light. There's a light, and we're being pulled into it. Do you require us to send an evacuation team? We're drifting away. No, I don't think... I don't think they'd fare. An evacuation team was mobilized at Site-19. However, before evacuation could occur, the colony suddenly vanished from reality. The only known survivors were 055 and several of his associates, who had escaped from the colony in a custom escape pod. Given the observations of the colony and this incident, SCP has now been classified as a sub-anomaly of SCP-5800. Notice. The file below was found on the same vinyl that we found the SCP-5800 file on. Given the fall of the Foundation occurred shortly after the events described above, this is believed to be relevant. Extended Description of SCP-5800 SCP-5800-A refers to the concept of the Foundation as an entity. After an event on 2095-0505, SCP-5800-A has been partially submerged inside of SCP-5800. This has had an impact on baseline reality, causing the alteration of the Foundation's core mission statement. The replacement of several high-ranking officers with members of Group of Interest 5, the Fifth Church. The release of many SCP artifacts and entities due to new protocols. The absorption of several minor groups of interest such as Group of Interest 49, the Global Occult Coalition. Incident Log 5800, Trinity. On 2095-0505, the Director of Mobile Task Force Alpha-1, Red Right Hand, entered the O5 Council's main chamber as part of a surprise inspection. However, they found O55 performing a ritual involving the sacrifice of several important Foundation personnel and the drawing of a star on the floor using chalk. Mobile Task Force Alpha-1 managed to interrupt this ritual, but suffered major casualties. Several modifications to the Foundation as a concept took place after the ritual. See extended description of SCP-5800 above. In response, parts of the Foundation broke off with the goal of overthrowing the O5 Council. Interview Log Interviewer, Dr. Sean Remus Interviewee 055. Begin log. Have you heard of the Chaos Insurgency, Overseer? Of course I have, Doctor. The Overseers have become tyrants. The Insurgency was formed because they did not want to see the world ruled by people with power left unchecked. I think we're trying to imitate them. That's not what this is really about, is it? No, no, no. The insurgency turned out to be a mistake in the long run. It's just a lot easier to rally behind the idea of eliminating tyrants than eliminating ideas. That seems a little extreme to you, doesn't it? So, what's your story then? Why have you suddenly changed the Foundation's prime directive and absorbed the competition? You don't really get it, do you? You think we can just solve the world's problems by putting them all in boxes? Four-sided boxes filled with the vilest and darkest of evils? If this is about the number five, there's no scientific evidence that it is what you claim it is. But God? God will cleanse this fetid world. This forsaken universe is a sin, and we will be born anew in God's glorious dazzling light. It's not a fantasy, Sean. It's not even a reality. It is so, so, so much more than that and beyond. It's an escape, and we have the key to bring it here. Key? Are you talking about SCP-5800? When you cut off the arm of a starfish, what happens? What? I don't... It grows back, right? You have to know. God's omnipresence expands above all worlds in every universe. We thought we could keep it out by obliterating the very idea of God's existence, and it didn't even work. We tried to excise it from the very abyss in our heads. We tried so damn hard to cut it out, but like a starfish, it grew back. You can't stop it. God is here to bring us what we deserve. 
With all due respect, Overseer, you're insane. What? You thought you could just lock the door and throw away the key? It was always there. We put God on the other side of the door and pretended that everything was all right, even though it wasn't. It never was. But we can still try to bring it here, Remus. Deep down in the moist music and the, the orgasmic smoke of your heart's mind, you know it's true. We already have the key, and we know what the door is. All you have to do is let them in, Doctor. Call your men off. Tell them to let them in. Okay, I think we've had enough here. Clefford, do you think you can edit it, sir? And lock. Okay, I think that about does it for today. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Big Sip, Zargaron, Old Crap Guy, James Saba, Braided Peach, Fire of Prime, Dr. Wolf 13, Cupster, Worthy Fire, Zazapan, Irish Wristwatch, Signar, Alatreon, your local foundation agent, and Lost Boy. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.